I, I, I've seen Doctor Who. I'm not like a huge Doctor Who fan, but I'm, I've, seen, I've seen a few seasons of it. I liked the guy before David Tennant. I don't know his name. Christopher Huddleston, Edelston, something like that. Uh, him, I liked him a lot, I, but I get a sense he wasn't one of like the favorite. Like every, a lot of people talk about David Tennant, you know, but uh, I like a lot of the comedies. Uh, I like Doc Martin, which is a British show. It seems like they allow regular looking people on TV in the UK. <laughs> you know, or a lot of, lot, of, lot of American TV, you know, doesn't matter, they're kind of glamorous sort of people and that. Anyhow, I digress. We're going to wrap up forms today, if I ever get around to it, and we will then get into tables. <coughs> forms, uh, the last thing I want to talk about that, that I remember, um, trying to think if there's anything else, but is HTML5 form controls. Now, HTML5, as you know, the idea of it was they started adding some tags that weren't in earlier versions of HTML that, were, that, that made the web developer's life easy, easier. And they, sort of more specialized tags. Like in, in, in the old days, there were div tags, all right, that just meant a section of the page, a division of the page, a section of the page. But um, really, there's different sections of the page. Not every section is like the same thing. So uh, in HTML5, they created a nav tag, a header tag, a footer tag, an uh, article tag, and a side tag, a section tag, and probably maybe a few others I don't remember off the top of my head. But that was more specialized. And that sort of gave you more control and would allow you to style things better in a more straightforward way. Uh, with HTML5, as far as forms go, the big difference is that um, they, they made more specialized versions of the input tag uh, with different types. So let me real quickly Google HTML5 forms, form tags. And there's a good section on W3 schools about new form elements, new input types, rather. Uh, let me see. We've covered all of these. These were the old ones. I hope there's a separate page for the new ones. I thought there was. HTML5, here we go. And really, these are just specialized versions of the regular old input tag. Now. The problem is with these is that not all browsers support them. So we'll see an example where the browser doesn't support them. And remember, there is the website can I use for HTML5. So what you can do with this is you can look up a particular tag And you can see what browsers use it and what browser doesn't. For example, there's a date and time uh, input type. And if you look, that's sort of mixed. Internet Explorer did not support it ever, even through version 11. Edge supported it, uh, sort of supported it. That's what the sort of uh, more olive green is uh, at version 12. And 13 through 18 support it. Firefox didn't support it through here, through here, and sort of supports it now. Chrome didn't support it, sort of supported it, supports it, and so on. So with this site, you can look up to see if, uh, if, if a particular tag is supported or not. So um, if it's, does that mean that you don't support it if, a particular browser doesn't support, doesn't support it. Does everyone have to support it for you to use it? No. But you have to be aware of that, and you have to make sure your website still works. 
before there were these HTML5 tags, people did things with a combination of HTML and JavaScript to make it work. So for example, if you had a field on your form that was a date, all right, you could use a regular old text box where you typed anything in, and then you could use JavaScript to validate to make sure it was a properly formatted date. All right, so that's what you did in the old days. So some of that stuff you might still have to do for a period of time, all right, until the browser support is overwhelming. Now, one thing nice about this site, again, is that it will show you what percentage of people use it worldwide. So 2.5% of people use IE. 0.37 use these old versions of IE. Safari, 1.36% uh, use that. 1.3% use that. Um, so we are up around 5% of the people that can't use it. And if we look around, we can get the percentages and we can add up. And that might, here's another 2% to use Opera Mini. So we're at 7%. 7% doesn't seem like a big number, but 7% is a lot of web users. All right, 7% of users worldwide. So you might be, you would need to sort of accommodate those. All right. This is, again, another case of what they call graceful degradation. In other words, if the browser doesn't support a particular tag or something, um, that it doesn't break your website. So for now, you, if you're going to use one of these, use it. It's great for the people that the browser supports it. But for people that don't, you might want to have a little snippet of JavaScript in there. So just an FYI. How does this date type, or how do these types work? Well, here's the color picker. So for example, if you had the ability for someone to, to choose the color of the text, or choose the color of the background, or something like that. If I click on this, I actually get, depending on my operating system, I get a color picker, where you can say, I want the background of my page to be this color. And I can sum, if I hit the submit button, it will send to the server um, the HTML code for it, the hex code for it. Now, this won't work in all browsers. Let me bring up Internet Explorer just to show you how it will behave. So in Internet Explorer, this is part of the graceful degradation thing, and this is a nice thing about browsers. If the browser doesn't understand something, there's some defaults it can perform. So the browser doesn't understand, Internet Explorer doesn't understand an input type of color. Doesn't understand input type equals color. So if it sees it, no, this is not in, this is, is this Internet? No, this is not Internet Explorer. This one's Internet Explorer. If Internet Explorer sees it, it gives you just a plain old text box. Now, You'd have to work around, you'd have to figure out a way to work around that. Maybe have a validator, maybe show examples of it. A lot of ways that you could possibly work around that. But just be aware that this is not going to work for every browser type. What are some of the other examples? Date type. Oh, yeah, date type. So type equals date. If I pick that, I get this, which will have, I can only type in like a valid month. So if I try to type in 33 for the month, I'm trying to type 33, it won't let me. I type a 3 in that field, it, it knows, well, that has to be 3. Or if I try to type 12, I can. But if I try to type 13, 
I can't. All right? What's more, if I click this, I can go up a year. I can go down a day, up a day. Or if I click this, I get a calendar control where I can pick a date this way. So a lot of nice features to be able to enter a date that way. But again, Internet Explorer doesn't work. So I could type anything in there, and it's going to try to send that over to it. Which would mean that if this is something important, I would have to put JavaScript in there. That's one of the biggest challenges in web department, uh, in web development, is that you have so little control about what your user is using. Someone might have an old machine that has an old version of Internet Explorer. Um, and there's different philosophies of, of how you handle that, right? There's some people in web development that say, well, it's okay to tell them, hey, you need to upgrade. There are things you can do in server-side code that looks to see what version of the browser they're using, and you could tell them, hey, this website won't work with this browser. You need to upgrade. I only like to do that as a very, very, very last resort. All right, because the whole idea of the web, again, getting back to what we talked about when we talked about accessibility is the universality of it. So therefore, as a business, you wouldn't want to physically exclude someone from your store you know, or, or, or your place of business. Uh, same thing in uh, software. You wouldn't want software to limit um, who can access your site. There's a min and max. So I can put in and say that the date would have to be at least before 1980 or after 2001. I can have a date and time, email address. In Internet Explorer, I can type anything in. Oh, this is not Internet Explorer. This is Chrome. In Internet Explorer, I have to type in a valid email address. And if I try to submit it, oh. I thought that was valid. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was because there was no dot something after the domain name. So strictly speaking, I don't think that was a valid email. But this is definitely not a valid. Uh, I guess all it depends on is that you have an at sign in there. Again, this won't work in Internet Explorer, um, but it would work in other operating systems or other uh, browsers. A file type. I can go and choose a file and get the name of the file. I'm not going to go through all of these. If you're developing a form, just look to see if any of these could benefit you. Month, number. Remember a text box prior to HTML5 was just a text box. You could literally put anything in it. So there was no way to say, hey, this is a text box, but only allow numbers in it, like if you had an age or something. You would have to use JavaScript to validate that. But with the, with the uh, number uh, input, um, you can, you can uh, verify that you can't physically type anything in that field. A range, a search, telephone number, time, URL, week, and so on. All right. I think that pretty well wraps up forms. What I want to go to now is I want to talk about tables. And I talk about tables a little differently now than I used to. Because in the bad old days, 
people would use tables incorrectly in web design. All right? Before CSS was widely supported, and before web developers knew CSS, they would use tables to lay out their page. And that's a bad practice. So I barely mention that now because chances are, unless you did web development a long time ago, you probably never heard of that. All right, so why, man, why, why dwell on an old bad habit that web developers had? There's no point in it. On the other hand, I do like to mention it, just in case you come across an old timer that says, oh, why, were you, why are you using that newfangled CSS? You can use a table to do the layout. Do not use tables for layout. The problem with tables for layout is they're typically not very accessible. And secondly, probably the biggest one, is you, it really limits the flexibility of the layout. Uh, we've seen examples where you can take one HTML page and format it a whole bunch of different ways. If you use a table for layout, you really limit that ability because it has to be laid out in a grid. All right. Now, we talked about a grid layout. Well, we can get a grid if you want one, all right? But we can also make it not a grid if we want to, simply by changing the CSS, all right? Um, I do want to show you a site now, and this is an inspiring site in my mind. Um, and the site is CSS Zen Garden. And what the site is about is it takes um, one web page, and it styles it a whole bunch of different ways. So all the changes on this page were not made through the HTML, but were made only through the CSS code. So this site was popular back when web developers didn't really know, or some web developers didn't really know about the power of CSS. So there's a group of web developers that wanted to sort of promote the good practice of using CSS. And so they developed this site. And nice looking site. Um, if you read it, and it, it welcomes you. In fact, um, my University of Akron class, I have them develop CSS files for this site, um, for, this, for this page. But you can download an example HTML and CSS file and you can make your own version of it, all right? But as we go and, and click around, there's a view all designs option that allows you to go and pick a design. And that is the same web page as that. It's just laid out differently. In fact, we can pick a few sort of landmarks on this page. The beauty of CSS design, CSS Zen Garden, a demonstration of what can be accomplished. If we look back on this page, the same thing. CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design, a demonstration of what can be accomplished. All right. All these pages are the same thing, are just versions of that page done with different CSS files. A lot of these are amazing. All done via CSS. So these are some of the best web designers in the world do it. So if you look at that and say, wow, my pages don't look like that, my pages don't either. All right, so don't sweat it. But take from it the, the inspiration that, of what you can do, of the capability. Now, how is that relevant to today's discussion? If you revert back to the old habit of using tables for layout, you won't be able to accomplish this. All right, now, why do we talk about tables at all then if it's sort of an old practice and, and we don't use it anymore? Well, there is a proper use for tables, right? So tables are good, just not for layout. Use tables for other things. 
it's like you know using a hammer to adjust your computer monitor right you shouldn't do that it's not a good idea right that doesn't mean there aren't valid uses for a hammer all right it means don't use it that way so tables um, have a great use just don't use them for layout so what do you use them for you do them to represent a table of data all right what do I mean by a table of data I mean something like you would get in Excel where you have rows and columns so something like Population trends by country. All right. Here's a table. All right. Shows a country. It shows. various estimates about their population growth growth world bank population growth cia un and so on this is a table of data and what do i mean by a table of data it means it has rows and columns like an excel spreadsheet you could easily imagine this being in a spreadsheet there's rows each row represents one country, and there's columns. Each column represents a different piece of data. All right, so in the first column, there is the country name or the region. In the second column, there is the estimate from the World Bank. In the third column, from the CIA. In the fourth column, a different CIA uh, estimate, and so on and so on and so on. So rows and columns of data. And you can tell what a, what a data item represents by looking at the rows and columns that it intersects. So for example, 2.78, what does that represent? Well, that represents the CIA's 2014 estimate of the population growth of Angola. So how did I tell that? I looked across to get the country. I looked up to get the field name. Average temperature by month by state. I'll bet that's a table. There we go. All right. First column is the state. Second column is the average Fahrenheit. Second column is average centigrade. Then there's the rank. And there's the states going down the side. And so on. Let's see what Ohio is. Ohio's smack dab in the middle, just about 26. Uh, average temperature. Yeah. So in other words, the average day in Ohio is 50.7 degrees, which puts us 26. What is the hottest state? The hottest state I think I saw was Florida. Number one. Hawaii's number two. Florida's warmer than Hawaii. That's surprising to me. What is the coldest state? Probably Alaska. North Dakota is up there. Minnesota is up there. And the coldest, yeah, would be Alaska. Yeah. Okay. But that's a table of data. What does this number represent? 12.9. You look up to see, well, that is average degree centigrade for Delaware. All right. So it's a table of data. All right. Now. Remembering what we studied like the first week of the class about the way white space is used, how do we, we can't easily space out data to do this. Let me take like the first
first few items and I'll paste it into an HTML document. I hope this works. Yeah, it's exactly what I wanted to happen. All part of my diabolical plan. Okay, it's really not that diabolical. Doc type HTML. HTML. Head. Title. Average temperature. Now, I might think, if I didn't pay attention in class, that I can do this. Well, let's see. I want to have a few rows in here, so I'll take the time to Arkansas warmer than Arizona would have never guessed that. Assuming this is reliable, of course. California, only the 12 warmest state, but I guess there's parts of California up north that probably bring down the average. Okay, after I painstakingly take all this time to create this, I'm going to be very disappointed, aren't I? And let's, for good measure, put the heading in, state. Average Fahrenheit, average centigrade. Oh. I'm going to be very disappointed. Why? Because HTML ignores white space. So, how is this going to display? all jumbled together. It's just going to be just a straight line of data. All right. So if I go this in the browser, hopeful, I go and open All the data shows just as a straight line. Because HTML, the browser, ignores and converts any of this white space, blank spaces, into a single space. So that becomes a single space. That becomes a single space. That becomes a single space. The carriage return and extra spaces becomes a single space and so on. All right? So I can't do that. All right? So what do I do? Well, this is where table tags come in. I create a table for this, all right? And there's four basic table tags, and then there's a few extra ones. 
We'll probably get at least through the four basic table tags today, and then the other table tags um, we'll get to next time. Um, <clears throat> tables in HTML consist of rows, and each row consists of a cell or a group of cells. So you have tables. Table consists of a group of rows. Each row contains some data cells. Now, the data cells can either be headings or data, right? In this case, the first line are headings, the, sec the rest of them are, are data. So that's our four tags. Table tag is table. Table row is TR. Table heading is TH. Table data is TD. So those are our tags. I don't know if you can see it because the light's kind of weird, but table, TR, TD, and TH. And the table tag goes around everything. There's a list of rows and TDs or THs. we're going to have. So, if we go back here, we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. Each row is going to consist of one, two, three, four columns. These rows, all the columns are going to be TDs. This row, all the columns are going to be THs. So, I put my table tag. My table tag goes around everything. My TR tag goes around each row. Then, it's going to be a table header, TH. This is going to take a lot of time. <laughs> I will try to type quickly. All right. I am actually going to cheat a little bit.
I'm going to copy these last rows. I'm just going to copy a few rows and I am just going to change the state name. So I know the data isn't accurate, but it's better than watching me type for 20 minutes. Okay, so now when I go and view this, notice what I have. I have a table tag that goes around the whole table. I have TR tag, one for each row. Each of my TR tags has four cells, all right, four columns. The columns are either THs or TDs. TH represents a table header. TD represents table data. So now if I view this, I get pretty much what I want. All right? Now, keep in mind this is the default because there's no CSS in it. And I didn't put anything in the table, any HTML in the table, to control the appearance, which is good, right? Because I should do it all via CSS. Let's make some observations. How big is each cell? Okay, and why is that? Okay. Okay, so if I, don't, if I don't state a size for it, it will make it as big as it needs to be, all right? So what's the biggest thing in the state column is either the word, is either, it looks like Arkansas, either that or Alabama. So that's how wide the state is. What's the biggest thing in average Fahrenheit? Average Fahrenheit. Average centigrade and rank, all right? So, it makes the columns as big as they need to be, and each row is simply the sum of the size of the columns, okay? There's another tag that we can put on this that's good for accessibility. I might as well put in from the start Forget this. Pretend you didn't see this, the border. We're going to do all that via CSS. No, 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 no. Caption. That's what I want. All right, caption is what I want. So let's put that in from the start. If you have a caption, it should be right underneath the table tag. And I can say something like this table shows states and their average temperature along with the rank in the U.S. It's good to keep this part of the table tag, 
because then assisted uh, technology like screen readers know that this caption belongs to this table. All right? And it's good for uh, people that can see, right? But it's also good for people that can't see because having a caption helps put the, put the data in context. It'll help them remember. So instead of just getting a dump of these things, all right, uh, one date after another that the screen reader would read, it first reads the caption so that the person kind of knows, oh, that's what's in this table. All right, so it gives context to the table data. All right. Yes. Yes, it does. Now, obviously, well, I don't know, obviously, it doesn't look real good. All right, but we can certainly do things to improve the style. For example, I can give a and I'm going to, just for convenience, I'm going to put the style code right in with the HTML. Again, it's still a better idea to use an external CSS file. Don't use inline style like they did in uh, W3 schools where you slap the style right on the HTML tag. In fact, no. I'm going to create a separate file. Practice what you preach. I know one of these you don't re need anymore, but I don't remember which. So one thing I can do is I can give the table a width, and I can either give it in terms of pixels or percent. Width, 60%. Now if I view this, it takes up 60% of the page. It still sizes the columns in proportion. So if we were to look, the state is a little bit bigger than the average Fahrenheit, average centigrade, and so on. Now, you might look at this and say, I don't like the fact that this is the header for this column, yet the header is centered and the TD is not centered. That's default behavior. Default behavior says that a TH is bold and centered, a TD is regular font and not centered. So I can fix this, all right? I can fix this however I want to, all right? But you don't make for example, if I want this centered, I would not make these THs, because they're not THs, they're TDs. If I want the TD centered, I put in the CSS that I want the TD centered. Never use the wrong tag just to get a certain visual effect, because you can use CSS to do the same thing and you can correct, create, use the proper tag. So, for example, if I wanted the TDs to be centered, I can just say TD... <coughs> text align center. And now they're centered. All right. Underneath the headers. Order bottom, very good. And I could do that underneath on the TH.
border bottom, 1px, solid black. Notice there's a teeny little gap. I can put on the table tag, I can say border collapse, collapse. That removes that little tiny gap between the table elements. It sort of drives me crazy. Now, I could style the caption if I wanted to. All right, and I'm in business. All right, next time, um, what do we have left to do with this? Well, there's a couple other tags that I probably will talk about. There's a lot of CSS that I will talk about. There's a couple other features with this, and we'll do more styling with it. Uh, this, in a nutshell, is the basics of tables. There's also con uh, accessibility considerations that I'll talk about as far as tables go. When we finish that, we will be on JavaScript, and we'll, we'll ride that for the rest of the semester. All right. Um, see you in lab. So I want the column to be left aligned. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even the header state, you know, not have the Alaska, Alabama, you know, but somehow another arrangement. Right. So the well, okay. So how do you how do you do that? How do you do a specific? Put an ID. You put an ID, or you put a class in it. Okay. And in this case, I would say, I would probably put a class. So I will say, I'll give a class of state name. And it's always better to use a class that represents the content and not how you want it to look. So state name is better than left aligned. So I'll say state name, text, align, left. And then I will just put that class on all of these. Unless you have a real good reason, it's generally better to use class than ID okay. because you know if you know it's something that there's only one of then give it an ID or if you're using it for uh, a label or in JavaScript but if you're saying gee I want all of these to look the same way um, probably going to use a class okay. and let's see let me just go in and add this to that Now that will be left aligned and those will be like that. All right. See you up in lab.